Peace and blessings, guys. What's going on? Peace and blessings, family. I'll be on here real quick and shortly to chop it up with you guys. Uh, Gmo. Sir? Chinese. Yes, sir. Put the light on right there for me. Light, look up. What's going on, family? Peace and blessings, guys. What's going on, man? Hope everybody's doing good. Peace and blessings, ladies, as well. I don't mean just say man. Uh, want to talk real quick to you guys about the new webinar that's going down tomorrow. If you have not signed up for that webinar, make sure that you sign up because I'm going to be dropping some gems. I mean, stuff I've never shared with you guys at all. I'm, I'm literally laying it all out to you, telling you how we did it. Um, and this is really for our uh, new subscribers. If you're already a music millionaire, you're going to wind up getting all this information anyway because you're already a part of the team. But Big ups to everybody right now. Peace and blessings. If you are on here, man, I want to give you, make sure that you give me a thumbs up, please. And it's, it's appreciate you, man. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, give us some likes here. It's 19 of you guys in the chat right now. Uh, let's see. Can I even see chat? Do I see chat? How can I see my chat? Uh, let's see. All messages are visible. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. There we go. There go the chat. All right. Peace and blessings, guys. So, uh, the one twenty seven and nine. Peace and blessings, family. What's going on, man? Hope you guys signed up again. Make sure that you sign up. If you have not signed up, make sure that you look inside of this link, man. Reckless, the producer. What's going on, family? Peace and blessings, man. Only have a short period of time with you guys today because we are preparing for the webinar tomorrow and we had so much going on. Matter of fact, I didn't even know if I, I thought I was going to have to cancel the webinar um, because I got um, some unfortunate news today. One of, uh, it's just crazy, man, where we are. Um, a ton of violence, for lack of a better word, and most of it's like infighting amongst family. And so uh, one of the um, local musicians here that uh, I'm cool with um, got shot today in the neck. Um, don't know his current condition. I do know he was alive um, for a, um, at least earlier today. Don't know his status right now, but you know I'll find out later on. So, um, what was that? I, I, okay. Skunky produce beat maker. Check me out on Beat Stars. Got time? When you got time? Appreciate you so much. Uh, beats in motion for you. Really appreciate that, man. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's really, I, I'll be honest with you guys, it is really, it's hard for you guys as well. What's up, family? Uh, River Schilling. It's really hard for you as well because that's a representation of you guys. We have to start looking at the music industry the same way police officers and law enforcement and first responders look at themselves. You know what I mean? Like, we are a commodity, guys. You know what I mean? And, and people really need to understand that. And if you don't understand what I mean by we are a commodity, and I'm going to do a video on this, but I want you guys to really understand the importance that you guys play in the music industry. You guys have a superpower, and that's the best way I can say this. And I, I, I really and literally mean this. You have a superpower because you have the ability to change people's perception. You guys change the way people feel throughout the day. Your music impacts people in such a way that you can inspire them to have a hellified day or you can inspire them to go and do something crazy. You guys have a superpower and a lot of producers don't realize that. So when, when I say that we have to start looking at each other as a community, we have to start looking at each other the same way law enforcement do. I mean that because everyone doesn't have this ability and skill to do the things that you guys do. And so uh, I really want you guys to hone in on that. I'm, I'm really right now in the uh, script writing phase for more videos that I want to do for you guys. We have a ton of videos already lined up, um, but Amazon is taking so much of my time and I'm getting the documentary together for Amazon along with the other stuff. But um, I'm going to do a video about the superpowers you guys have. And, and it's so funny because I like to listen to conspiracy stuff, right? Real, I'm real heavy into the conspiracy theory stuff, not the, the offlandish stuff, the things that make more sense. And so um, it was so powerful to hear the other day. I was listening to a um, video about the pyramids, right? And they were talking about how the pyramids 
base, which I think was granite and how it's porous or limestone, one of the two, uh, and I could be wrong, please forgive me with this, but it was, it, was, it was based on granite and limestone being porous and how that bottom base of the pyramid operates and vibrates off of, I think, F minus, which is what the, the earth is, is vibrating on, right? And so um, basically the equation came out to that this, the pyramids are designed as energy um, generators. And so the key behind that, okay, so you might've heard all that, but the key behind that was the fact that it's a harmonic frequency, that the energy is based off a harmonic frequency. And so we talk about music is life all the time, right? So that fact alone resonated with me in such a way that it played a part in what I talk to you about music is life. So when you look at, if you play certain notes, and, and any of you who are in tune with like military um, weapons and things like that, understand that the United States government has um, um, uh, what they call uh, weapons that are based on sound that, you know, they can subdue um, people with, you know, the, the big dish that they send the microwave frequencies to. So that just says so much to me because it talked about you guys. That's why I came up with the whole, you guys have superpowers because your music has the ability to change, hurt, uh, inspire, heal, all these different things, you understand? And I mean that literally, that we have the ability to, to heal. And um, I think once a lot of artists grasp that, it won't be this superficial way of looking at your music. You will respect the music that you create in a, in a loving way. Like you guys have the power to change the mood of children, right? You don't have to speak the language of a baby. You don't have to, and do this guys, when you get a chance, make some, some upbeat um, children based music and go visit some of the uh, preschoolers guys. Just do that. Ask can you go and visit and share some of your music. See if you can be a part of them and play some preschool music with them hopping on one foot. Watch how you change the children's energy. And uh, I just think it's so powerful, man. It's, it's why I love you guys as producers. I, it's why I love you and, and, and call you my family. Um, and it's uh, and hopefully it's why you respect me, man. But um, you guys uh, just tune in tomorrow, man. If, if you have not, I just released a video uh, telling you my top 10 secrets to how we made it. This, that is not clickbait. I'm doing a webinar tomorrow for all my new subscribers. Come in, guys. You know, like I just dropped that jewel about vibrations and, and frequencies and tones and how you control. I'm running down to you the top 10 things that led to us working with Dr. Dre and continue to work with Dr. Dre. You know, as I spoke with my brother yesterday, uh, his plate is overloaded right now with work. Um, you know, he's doing so much there. And I'm working on this end with our TV and movie production and teaching you guys because he's always known that my passion is with you guys. And so there is nothing or no one that can ever take me away from helping you guys succeed um, because that's where I get my blessings from. Um, but yes, uh, someone I just seen someone said that we're basically doctors. Yes, you are. And doctors in every sense of the word, producers are doctors because you do have that ability to physically heal people with your music. That, and, and I mean literally, you know what? Y'all can start wearing X-Men t-shirts, but if I'm gonna make some X-Men t-shirts. Come up with some characters, guys, that we can we can print, man. Like literally, I'll, I'll share royalties with you. Think of some some dope X Men characters that we create, right? And T-shirts because we we as musicians, right? We have powers, man. And I want people to really respect that. That is dope, man. You know what I'm saying? I, like we need to pitch that, guys. Let's pitch that. Let's let's see if we could pitch that idea to the next Marvel. Create our only the DC comic uh, character that represents us or a uh, 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 Marvel. Okay. But where you can find the webinar link is in, did I, did I not put it in here? Can someone copy the link from, if you know like a, a Diasty or one of you guys or BK Bangers, whoever's in here, can you copy the link and put it in the chat for everybody to see please? Uh, because I can't do it from here, or maybe I can. Let's see. Anyway, um, uh, you guys have no idea, I gotta go through a whole bunch of ish anyway now um i want to share that with you guys really want to share that with you guys so let me see for all of you just coming in we're talking about the power that producers have uh creating music and how we change the harmonic 
sonic frequencies of people and how music can heal. And we were talking about all these different things. But it was more than likely talking about all your new subscribers and people who don't know how we actually made it. Uh, even 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 my old heads, even my music millionaires, come on in. You're more invited to come into the webinar tomorrow. I'm literally sharing something I've never shared with anybody. These are um, the 10 ways that we made it. And it's going to be, I promise you, it's going to be some things you knew. But then again, it's going to be some things you did not know and how you can really change the frequency of your business and your music and how you actually become successful. It is the exact steps that we've taken. It's also the exact steps that I've seen other musicians take. And it's how we've all been able to move in the same wave. And when I say we all, I mean literally like most of the uh, musicians and artists that you've heard of from Justice League to us, the Peacemakers, um, uh, Drake, all these guys, everyone, we've used a certain method that we People don't share it. I've been sharing little bits and pieces of it with you guys throughout, you know, my tenure here on Music Millionaires. Some of you picked up on it and utilized it, like Sean Moore. Um, you know, I signed uh, Chris Knox a while ago. He's become a platinum producer because of signing with us and uh, and uh, getting, you know, platinum. And, and, and mind you, again, this is all documented. Um, Sean Moore is now uh, one of the Grammy members down in Atlanta. He's working with Deron Jones. There's just plenty of examples that I can give you of us sharing certain information and certain people honing in on it and really going in and that's going to be the key do not go to that webinar tomorrow if you don't plan on paying attention and implementing what i talk about don't waste your time don't waste mine but it's going to be tomorrow okay guys and i, and I promise you it's going to be well worth you uh doing that so uh demario townsend big Peace and blessings, family. BK Bangers. Now, let me tell you all something about BK Bangers. For those of you who don't know, go to BK Bangers' channel because the BK is another guy that listens, man. Um, you guys have a, a, a power, again, as we talked about, as producers and musicians, that you will. And one of the things that I was telling you about with YouTube is putting yourself and positioning yourself to be in a better situation for socially, right? To be able to promote your music. So one of the things that BK did a while ago, he did several videos for me, which I'm always down. If any of you guys want to do tutorials and I can help promote your YouTube channel, just hit me up on the email, musicmillionaires at gmail. Let me know what you want to do and I will highlight your tutorial on my channel. But BK Bangers did that. And when BK started out, BK, how many, how many subscribers? I think you didn't have that many subscribers, but he has become consistent with what he's doing and he's doing tutorials that is that is that is that is crazy right now breaking this stuff down i think bk has well over a thousand subscribers now in a little probably a little under a year maybe about a year uh and he's banging them out man so yeah maybe 90 he had 90 uh subscribers and um if you go to bk's channel now his subscriber base has picked up and it's only going to increase and and the key behind it like i said guys is you know, send over videos here. We're going to promote you. All of you, you know, as producers, I always tell you guys, support each other. You know what I mean? Because that's where our first line of support should come from is each other's producers, not hate, not criticism, not bullshit, not envy, none of that. Because again, this is a community just like the police guys where we have to support each other. But I want you guys to uh, make sure that we all chime in with each other and I want to promote you guys and your channel because if you're watching me more than likely you guys have a channel and if you are been paying attention to me you are using your channel hopefully to build up your fan base to build up a following build up pe people that you can help teach something to and that's what you guys really have to do I don't care how minute it is right don't try and give them everything just give them little things man you know give them little things that you know will help them better their career and that's the responsibility of a lot of you old heads if you and i'm calling you old head if you're over 30 any of you that's over 30 your job should be to teach the younger generations what it is we have learned in the music industry so that not only will you become that mentor okay with them but you will also be um paying in advance you'll be paid what is the word i'm looking for I, my mind just draw a blank uh, paying it forward, excuse me. So, uh, really want you guys to hone in on that. BK said, I dropped a, uh, I think he said beat tape utilizing some of the input from SG1, hashtag pay attention. That's what's up, brother. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's another old head, man, that, um, uh, love that dude, that man. Love him, man. I mean, 
I love uh, BK, man. And I love most of you guys who reach out to me and contact and I've had phone conversations. Um, but anyway, um, that's what I'm talking about, Patrick. I appreciate you guys. So um, like I said, if you have not signed up for the webinar, please make sure you sign up for the webinar. If you're following me on Instagram, you're probably seeing the post on Instagram as well um, where we're talking about the webinar. Uh, like I said, even my old heads, come on in chill out, relax. Trust me, I promise you, I'm gonna say some things you guys have never heard before. I'm gonna give you insight to some things that you never thought about. I'm really gonna chop it up with you guys and walk you through what me and my brother did in order to make it, okay? So I uh, really want you to do that. Uh, Gary Quirk said, I use some of your tips every day. Thanks for a ton for everything you do. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, guys. French the Kid 420. French the Kid, my French the kid, French the kid stays high, <laughs> but he has some dope lyrics, man. He's a real good rapper and entertainer. Check him out on Instagram as well, guys. Um, and and really thank you, ah, Demario Townsend. See, you're the only one who really picked up on the SG One thing. See, aha, that's what I'm talking about. So that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Um, and the rest of you guys, if you have, this is the time for you to share. And this is what I want to do. I want to take at least 30 to 40 seconds out right now, dedicated to you guys. Share your YouTube channel, share your links, share, share. Let everybody know who you are here. If you got music you want us to listen to, say that, go check me out guys. Listen to the music, support, whatever it is that you feel you want to critique or you want to hear other, have other ears on your music to see what you need to change or just to you know support you or support your streams, make sure you do that. Uh, speaking of which, I knew what it was. Let me talk about this real quick while I got you guys on. So, um, there is a platform, and I want you guys, for all of you who have uh, iPhones, this works for you. Uh, if you don't have iPhones, there is a platform called Station Heads, and it, they're developing an Android form along with web. But download for my iPhone users a app called Station Head, and Station Head basically is a radio station. We have a radio station there called Goat Music. Go to Goat Music, follow me on there. But what it does is, it allows us to create a radio station, right? Because they're not accepting everybody to create their radio station. But what you can do is if your music is already distributed through iTunes or Spotify, or anything like that, you're able to go to Station Head, go to the channels and the DJs who are have radio shows, request your music. More than likely, all of them will request your music, right? And say, for example, you have uh, you you recommend a hundred of your fans or followers to go to Station Head and request your music. So now you got a hundred people listening all at one time when they play your music, you get that hundred streams simultaneously paid the revenue for that. So um, Bruce Lee said new song dropping with Drake soon. Yo, send that to me, bro. Definitely want to hear that. Give me a snippet. I don't have to hear much. I'll be interested in hearing what DR got going on. But um, so Station Head allows you to send your fans to a DJ and then have them request your music. And when that music is streamed, you get the revenue from that. Um, ski masks and bangles on all streaming servers. That's what I'm talking about, family, peace and blessings. So, you know, I wanted to drop that jewel on you guys as well. So hopefully it works for you guys. I know a lot of you guys want to be more in control of your streaming revenue. This is a way, yes, it is free. This is a way for you to control that now. This is a way now that you can have more control with your music being streamed and you chart. You actually chart on it. There's a girl there named Heather Hartley. She has a, a dope song. She's been on the charts now for the last four weeks, I think, all because of Station Head and all of the DJs playing her music. And um, it's no Station Head, like my big head, Station Head. Uh, but she's charting because she's using Station Head. And you basically just go there, get, get you know, tune in with the stations, everybody who radio uh, uh, hosts, tune in when they have their going live, chop it up with them, listen, you know, and then request your song. There's a way that you request your song, find your song, and then request it. And then when you request it, they'll play it live for everyone that is uh, listening to the channel. And then what happens is it automatically becomes a part of their uh, rotation. So it stays in their rotation unless they remove you, which means, imagine this, if you have 7,000 radio stations all playing your music, and, and when they go live, your music is in rotation, or anytime someone goes to their channel to listen and your music is being played, 
you are getting that exposure, you are getting that royalties, you are making that streaming revenue. Can't make that up. Y'all can thank me later, <laughs> all right? But check us out, GOAT Music, because I want to build up our station. I want us to be in control, okay? Super Chat, I'm getting ready to enable Super Chat. We have not done it because we were working on some things with the channel. So we are going to be doing Super Chat soon, and then we'll be able to take um, those who have um, Super Chat questions and, and you're contributing, and then I'll, I'll deal with a lot of that. All right. Uh, Asterix Music says, I do animated clips, stop motion videos featuring my music, along with tips and tricks for optimizing music workflows. Make sure you hit me up, bro. Definitely want to talk to you. We got work for you because we got some stuff that's going down with Netflix and Amazon. Uh, Big Kahuna says, Peace, I don't have enough people listening to me. Can I still go to GOAT Music? Yes, you do, brother. Please come to GOAT Music on Station Head. Hit me up. Um, and when we go live, just send a request for us to play your music. I got you. You know I got you. I'm, I'm getting ready to hire somebody full time just to head up station heads for me. Um, but we have, I think, I think we're almost pushing a thousand uh, followers or subscribers or something like that to the radio station, which most people don't have that, but we do have that. So yes, I definitely got you, brother. Uh, let's see what else I got real quick. Aha, Gary Quirk. See, now, Gary, you, you done already gained a place in my heart. See, because you said anything new with your cousin's Native American music career. Yes, we are actually working with um, our Native American brothers and sisters on getting them music distribution, getting them in place, because anyone who knows the Native American scene knows that most of us are not um, uh, getting royalties. We are one of the very few Native American artists uh, musicians that have the plateau that we have and have actually made it successfully and so a lot of Native American brothers and sisters aren't there and yes we are working with them to try to make this a uh, great event matter of fact I know my cousin's probably watching now so it's really on him right now because he's in all the powwow circuits he's going to all the powwows constantly so all right uh, I don't know but I did speak with uh, Andrea one of the station head representatives they are adamantly working on the Android version of it Bro, guys, let me let me tell you something. It is revolutionary what Station Head is going to be for the music industry. It's revolutionary what Station Head is going to be for the music industry. And um, they reached out to me yesterday. They have over 300 A and R reps that are signed up to their service and listen to new artists. Listen to me again when I say this. They have over three and listen to new. So make sure you guys who have iPhones. Go to Station Head, old music in our hands so we can play, all right? And I'm not just talking about um, full songs. It can be incomplete songs or just instrumentals as well. It's going to pay you the same, okay? Once it's, once, it's, once it's played, it will pay you the same. And send any of your fans over there as well. Tell them to come to Station Head, download it. Tell them to hit us up on Goat Music, request your music so we can stream it. And when they all come there, you're going to get that revenue, I promise you. Every time they request a song, we're going to play it. I don't care if we're in the middle of playing Key Sweat or whoever, all right? We're gonna play your music when they request it, which means guaranteed. The more that they play your music, the quicker you chart, literally, all right? So um, while you guys at it, make sure you hit the thumbs up again. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, please. Uh, what else is there? Now, I apologize. I, I gotta get this super chat thing working as soon as possible, as soon as we're on the channel. And that's just us basically in UMG. We're working out some things. See if there's any. Okay. Uh, Keep Yourself says, is there a good resource that tells how to do a song from start to finish that is not so drawn out? All right. Keep Yourself. Let me, let me say this to you first and foremost. There is never going to be a situation because, listen, we have been in the music business 30 plus years in the industry and we have mastered our craft. There is no shortstop to learning how to do a complete song and within five minutes, okay? All the songs or all the videos or tutorials that do that, they're pretty much animated bullshit or they have some, they jump cut videos and they have some comedy involved. But when you're talking about becoming the best, there is no shortstop. However, tomorrow I am, that's one of the things I am talking about in the webinar. I'm giving you guys the secret sauce to how we actually became platinum writers. I'm telling you basically, step by step, what we did, okay? 
to be able to master songwriting, what we did to master production, why everybody used that song, why we have well over 150 placements, I think it is now, with major artists and, and things of that nature. So I will be teaching that. So if you haven't signed up for the webinar, make sure you sign up for the webinar tomorrow. It's gonna to be 12 o'clock Eastern time. And I did that for the, for the West Coast. So for those of you who are on the West Coast, you will have time, it's nine o'clock in the morning that you'll be able to get up if you're not at work or if you're at work, you'll be able to watch it. And it's not, it's not six or seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> Brother Bindu said, my mixing is so trash right now. <laughs> the Mario Towns and Teach the Grass out, but that's what's up. Um, but um, it'll also be on a replay, so if you miss it or you're watching this video later on and you missed the webinar tomorrow, uh, it'll be on replay, but that will also be the best time to be able to ask, ask me questions, especially based on the, the topics that I'll be talking about. So um, try not to miss it because you'll be able to ask me questions at that time and we'll be able to go in. Say, hey, Kalani. Hey. All right. Good job. <laughs> so uh, make sure you hit me. And I told y'all guys, my children are my lifeline. That's it's all about my babies. So you see my babies at the office. All right. Oh, yeah. He had to come back up and say, Origin, what's up, babe? Peace and blessings. Bruce Leon, all you need is music with an image. Doesn't need to be good. Look at blue face. Yeah. All right. That's exactly. I just repeated what he said. All right. And what did I say to you? If, if you are... If you are new to my channel, I've said this to people before, right? I said to you, now it don't even matter what your music sounds like. Marketing image. Marketing image. You get the following, people don't care. Look, that is, if that is, all of you who have been on here and you heard me say that, please make sure you thumbs up, okay? Because you know that I said that, okay? That now, Blueface is the best example. He won't be the last example of it doesn't matter whether or not your music is good or not. Nicolani. Come over here real quick. Come over here real quick. Thank you, I'm glad you good. Uh -huh. well, that's a lot, look at this, this is a lot of gel. Look at that. See that? What do you want to tell them to do? What do they need to do to the channel? Y'all need to subscribe, mm -hmm. hit the like button, uh -huh. and hit the notification bell. There you go, thank you, brother. All right. Can yes, you can, yes. My son there. <laughs> All right. All right. So, let's see. Yes, um, Jalen Dijon says basically it's all marketing. That's correct. We're going to talk about marketing as well. Image and reach. Yes. So, you guys definitely need to know and, and chime in tomorrow because you'll be able to ask all these questions. Matter of fact, you can ask them now if you want. Um, oh, my God. Y'all see my little warehouse back here? Look at that. See all that stuff? So that's the equipment. And it is a draft that comes from back there that is crazy. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, come on. Ask me some questions. I have exactly 15 minutes before I get off of here. I got 15 minutes to spend time with you guys so that we can prepare for tomorrow. 15 minutes, that means I can ask questions. Um, you will have to do something dynamic because I don't. Let me see. I know, I know UMG is going to trip. The webinar is going to be on a separate website that we're using. We're actually going to be using um, Jindy, which is called Webinar um, Webinar Jam. We're using them for it. So, and let me switch this around. All right, guys, don't get dizzy. All right. Okay. All right. Y'all guys can still see me? All right. Okay, so French the Kid, you need to... Okay, let's, let's talk about the Grammy aspect of it. You can join the Grammy, and it's real easy. Go to the Grammy website, join to become a member, all right? And they have a criteria that you have to uh, apply for. And I think it's like $100 maybe to become a Grammy. It's been so long now that I don't remember. But make sure you go uh, there in order to become a Grammy uh, member. And that's very important. Becoming a Grammy member puts you in the right place. 
Yes, we will be doing manual fox. Yes, we'll be doing more placements. However, I did put you guys who are music millionaires in touch with the place that you can have access to all of the placements um, as well. Origin, what do you mean you haven't subscribed to me yet on Instagram? What you mean you're not following me on Instagram? Really? Really? I got Russians following me on Instagram, bro. I have to figure out how I can translate to Russian, uh, Hindi, uh, and German because I'm getting a ton of followers from there. Let's see. All right, so yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta wait till we finish this super chat thing up. Um, let's see what else. Beats in motion, four J. Peace and blessings, family. So for those of you who are asking about the, uh, the uh, membership, uh, Grammy memberships, uh, they have certain facts. I'll go ahead and read certain things off to you. It says, why should I join the Recording Academy? Um, Recording Academy membership is a privilege reserved for those who uh, excellent professional accomplishments are matched by their passion for the music community. That's one, so think about that, okay? Um, should I put together an EPK even though I don't have? Yes, put together an EPK. You definitely need an EPK. Um, and it gives you access to voting for members for the Grammy Awards, okay? Um, that's one answer. It says basically, what is the Recording Academy membership process evol involving reflecting the peer driven process that fuels the Grammy Awards? Recording Ac uh, Academy membership will now also be a community driven peer reviewed process moving forward though through the membership invitation process. Music industry peers identify and recommend all other qualified professionals to join the Recording Academy ranks. The Recording Academy is rolling out this new membership model in an ongoing effort to foster a new representative and relevant membership body, which means you have more opportunity in order to get your uh, Grammy on, guys, uh, which basically helps you as musicians and music producer. If someone actually uh, music qualifies for a Grammy or is voted for a Grammy award and they become Grammy nominated, that makes you as the producer or artist Grammy nominated as well, okay? So um, it's a great thing to, to, to be a part of. And thank you guys for answering the questions again. This is the community. So yes, EPK is basically an uh, electronic press kit, all right? AKA your music bio, AKA your credit card. Any more questions? I'm gonna answer the questions I can see right now. Michael Bailey, peace and blessings, brother. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching my old getting gray ass talk to you guys about the music industry. And I, and I love talking to you guys about the music industry. Like I said, it's my passion because you guys have so much energy. I love the excitement. Um, that's one of the things I will teach you about. Matter of fact, let's talk about it now. It's the last thing that I'm going to talk about in my 10 steps. All right. Um, and Jazzy Lamel, ask, please ask. Black Ave, Shalom, peace and blessings, brother. Itamukla in our language. Chantamo uh, Hitoklo. Um, you have to see your success, okay? You should have to, and, and I, that's a great question too. What should a manager do for your success? What should a manager main focus be? But you guys have to see success. It's a part of the way we made it. We literally saw ourselves making it. There was no second guessing that. We knew we was gonna make it. If you solely rely on what you know in the industry to make it or who you may know, which is also a great a tool to get you there, it's not going to happen. You have to see yourself here. We could not have made up or put ourselves in this situation to work with Dr. Dre. If it was that easy, everyone would be there. Everybody would be working with Dre. But the reason why we've had this longevity, the reason why my brother is still like right here next to Dre. This is where my brother is. For those of you who don't know, this is Dre. This is my brother. 
this is where he stays with Dre. When, when my brother wants hot material, he knows we're gonna provide it. So my brother is right here with Dre all the time. I can't make this up. And check him out um, on Anderson Pac's uh, album, Snoop Dogg's album, uh, Royce the Five Nine. It's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. You can always hear my brother. My brother is considered the, the Nate Dogg now of the music industry. Now that the brother, you know, rest in peace, is passed on. They call my brother the hook master. Uh, anyway, you got to see yourself in this position, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that last question that somebody asked about the management process and what the management be doing, but I think Q the Turnip had a great question, which is, what is the best way to get an artist to work with the idea or mood, or mood you create without deterring the artist's creative process? Let me first say that if an artist cannot grasp the mood that you have, then you might wanna look at another artist. Secondly, you as a producer, produce, Guide them in the direction you see the music. That's your job. That's your job. Your job is to guide them in the direction of the music. Sometimes you have to tell them to change the words or lyrics up. Sometimes you have to say that melody doesn't go good with this particular. Oh, I think and it's how you say it, really. You, you can get the best out of performer if you guide them the proper way and you stay humble. Like, no disrespect to your art and your craft. I think we might need to move in this direction with this particular song. I'm hearing it more like a melodic. Oh, OK, you remember so and so? You remember Taylor Swift when she did this or remember Jill Scott when Jill Scott did this? You have to physically bring them in to that moment that you perceive the music going or the direction that you see because oftentimes when you allow a songwriter the creative aspect or creative openness to be creative right they may go where it takes them sometimes it's a mesh between the two because you don't want to just wholeheartedly say no don't do that do this sometimes you're going to have to make that connection and do it together. Okay, well, I see where you're going with it, but I hear the melody a little different when it comes to this aspect of it. You understand if that makes sense? Yeah, got you. Uh, now, there was a question real quick. And this is why well, I guess we got to do super chat at some point in time. Because uh, there was a question that the brother asked. Okay. Uh, Oshino99 said, what should a manager's main focus be? A manager's main focus should be acquiring more job opportunities for you. A manager should be building out a team for you, uh, public relations, uh, things of that nature. A manager's job is just that, to manage your business. And see, now this goes back to the conversation I had with you guys Sunday. If you don't have anything for a manager to manage, you don't need a manager, which means there's a level of responsibility that I have been constantly have to tell artists. And, and, and no in particular person, so whoever you may be, don't take this out of context if I had this conversation with you, but if you have nothing I can manage, what do you expect me to do? I can't get you features unless we pay for a feature, which means you need to have money, right? I can't get people interested in you or doing a feature for you for free if you don't have a fan base or they don't see where they're going to benefit out of it. I can't get um, people to do a, a mainstream press release on you with a large network if there is nothing trending about you or there is nothing that says people want to hear about you. You have to understand that aspect of it. So getting a manager and you don't have anything in place with them is wasting your time because you're going to have to actually pay that person eventually, depending on what type of management you have, a lot of a lot of management firms want you to guarantee that they're going to make so much money per month because they're going to do their job, they're going to do your job for them, but they want to get paid. So you have to set that manager up to have a slam dunk, be able to easily represent you because of your social media, which is just your fan base following. So give that manager something to do, give them uh, something to work with, and. Once you do that, once you find yourself overwhelmed with your workload, that's when you should be looking to get a manager. When you find yourself no longer able to account for the money or keep up with your, your streaming revenue or your merchandising revenue or people contacting you for press releases or a, a statement or a comment on something of that nature because you've become that relevant, that's when you get your manager. Can you help build a fan base? Yes, real simple. You have to help yourself. There is nothing I can do except for tell you guys the truth. You need to learn how to hack the fan 
face situation. And what are fans? I've, I've said this to you ample times before, guys. Fans are only people that relate to you. How do you get fans today? How? Real simple. Open yourselves up. Open your lives up. Okay? Because your fans aren't fans. Your fans are actually your friends. These are your friends or your haters, right, who, who want to see you fail. But most of the time, fans now are people that can relate to you. Once a person can relate to you and you produce music, they'll be able to relate to that song that you created, that track that you related, because there'll be a side of your life that they are able to gravitate toward because they get a chance to see you constantly. So... Stop looking at fans in the way of I'm acquiring somebody who wants to hear my music and start looking at your fans in a way that says I'm acquiring people that are interested in me, but I have to be interesting. I have to be interesting. Now, a lot of you guys are real open and, and straightforward people. So your mindset's a little different than, than most, most of the average. So I'm not saying that you would not be following me if I was not working with Dr. Dre and my brother still is working with Dr. Dre or we weren't the peacemakers or Grammy award winning. But it does make a difference to be following somebody who actually has the experience, they're still working in the industry, who has tangible information, who's sharing stuff that you can relate to that makes sense. All that matters to why people follow this particular channel. I'm giving them real stuff that they can relate to. If I didn't give you that real side and I didn't show you my children and my family and my office and my life and bring you into my life, it will be different because you're like, oh, you know, this dude is dropping information. This is the other part of me that I hope people see. Like I've been always open to who I have been from day one. I've always put you inside of my little bubble. That's why I was sharing video clips of us in the studio with Dre and when we jumped on the G5 and we had to travel, you know, from Cali to Detroit to the Eminem show. I was giving you guys my life and what, what we were dealing with at that time, okay? So that is the aspect of fans or building a fan base that you really have to comprehend, okay? I know I miss I know I miss some um, questions. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, you guys, y'all can send me tracks. You know you can send me tracks. I prefer you to send uh, your SoundCloud links and stuff like that, so you don't clog up my email uh, box because I have to pay for my Gmail. I don't have just the free. Gmail account. You guys have forced me to actually buy a damn Gmail account. So I have a terabyte of <laughs> space because of all the music that you guys have sent me. And I try not to waste it. I never know when there's opportunity for me to get you a placement so someone may be interested in your music and so that I can just contact you and say, hey, look, we got opportunity. Y'all want to split this? Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. And then we're off to the races getting money. So uh, send me links though. Yes. Oh, seen on that now. You're more than welcome, brother. Jesse Triple X said, should producers slash beat makers have a manager? Let me say this first, Jesse, and I'm not pooping on you at all. Do not call yourself a beat maker. People don't want beat makers. Contrary to what you believe, people want producers. Producers take over projects. Producers make sure that the representation of their music is done the right way. Producers make sure that you have a product that it's going to be loved and liked. So stop calling yourselves beat makers and start calling yourselves producers. It plays a large part in a person's mind when you say, yeah, I make beats or yes, I produce music, okay? However, when you get to that point when you need a manager, like I just outlined it, you probably just get on this, on this particular live stream. Yes, you should get a manager when you have something for the manager to manage. Black Ave, I want to learn deeper. Is there a way I connect, contact you on the language? Um, well, let me first let me say this because uh, I think you were speaking Hebraic. Um, Shalom. Um, spoke a little Arabic. Mahrabaki Alhamdulillah. You know all that stuff there, and then a little uh, Aramaic. I've read Aramaic before, but imyate unke hechite yamasi hechite po unke semenole. So my people speak Hechiti, and it's a old language which is tied into the Mayan language. Um, either way, but I, cause I think you speak Hebraic, but off subject with the music, but I just wanted to bring that up. 
Good, Origin. I appreciate you. Because you're obviously a music millionaire, so you've been dropping it to Daniel. Good. Uh, gaming channel. Okay, what plugins can be used to make audio more crisp and loud? Thanks. So, gaming channel, great question. But however, let me say this to you. Push away plugins. Get past plugins. That's the problem. Don't focus on plugins. If you've recorded great quality audio, either through your mic, if you've done everything you're supposed to do, as long as your music isn't distorted and it's not peaked out, you should be getting and able to control the quality of your sound. If you're using a great condenser mic and it doesn't have to be an expensive, uh, uh, um, unaffordable condenser mic, just a very great quality condenser mic that is either for recording vocals or instrumental because there are a difference, okay? If you have the proper mic, and you are recording and your levels are right, you're not peaking and you're not, in other words, you shouldn't be going under 12 decibels, okay, when you're recording. It should not be going over that 12 decibel. It should be basically, and the 12 decibels I mean is you are staying within the range of that green that you may see when you're recording. When you start getting into yellow, you're still pretty good, but once you start seeing red, you don't need that. In order to get great quality audio and a sound, you need to make sure that you're not peaking. You need to make sure that you're using the correct um, mic for whatever the purpose that you're using it for. So if you're recording instrumentation, then you need to have a mic that is for instrumentation. If you're recording audio, you need to have a condenser mic for your audio or vocals. And it also changes determining the, the, the vocal range of your said recording artist. Okay, so depending on like I have a more deeper voice, there is literally mics for me and my deep voice, and then there's mics that are able to handle the uh, falsetto people, you know, people who can sing in falsetto. So uh, you should be recording without plugins first, guy. Record without plugins first. Get a raw, flat sound, okay? Something that's um, that could be worked, and then go to from there. However, for more detailed information, most of these guys here can tell you what plugins you need because there is not one plugin in particular that you can use. There's more than likely plugins, but it's still based on what is happening to your music. And so when you ask a generalized question like that, it's hard to pinpoint you to a particular, thank you, somebody said preamp. It is hard to pinpoint a particular plugin that you need to use, not understanding what's going on with your audio. Thank you, Cortana. I appreciate you, Cortana. For making music, is Max really any better than PC? Nowadays, no. However, Max have higher performance. Um, they they really outperform the average PC. All standard Macs are designed to be high performing um, machines. PCs now have been upgraded to be able to deal with it. Uh, and I, I say that because we have a I have a ghost for Adele. It's a sleeper, and basically it's an old computer, old PC that I've, um, I've modified to work like a, a race car, okay? But when you look at it, it just looks typical because I do a lot of video editing here. I also do edit, uh, audio editing and it requires a lot of processing speed. But no, Macs are standard and Macs are most of the time used in studios, okay? And they are the preferred method, but nowadays you can build out a computer or just buy a gaming computer and spend the extra money if you are accustomed to just a Windows based or Linux based type uh, situation. Uh, but there, these days, no, there is no difference. Back in the days, I would have said yes, Mac would have, is 100% completely uh, what you need to use because all, all you old heads know, you know, we used to use the G1, the G3, and all these different things for us to Mac when it was coming to recording Pro Tools. But like I said, now with modern day, um, uh, uh, ad modern day advancements, you can get the same thing. Mario Town said he's going hybrid to set up. Great. Good. Good. A lot of answers. A lot of a lot of you guys are answering questions in here, and I love that. Thank you. Q to turn up. Yes, you can send me SoundCloud count, uh, links for insight. For sure. That's what we do. See, Demario, boy, you've been in the studio. 500 series chassis with one preamp. That's what I'm talking about. Talk that language to him, Demario. <laughs> Little brother right there, man. All right. Black Ab, I like that logo, Black Ab, it sticks out. All right. That's what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Community, step up, that's what I'm talking about. Gaming Channel says PC stepped, they game up, they like neck and neck, yes they are, 100%. 
And you're more than welcome, Black Adam. Digital analog converter, yes. And I'm working on something, guys. I'm looking, uh, I'm, I'm working on several different things. I'm looking and I'm trying to find a company that produces great, affordable uh, condenser mics because I want to brand our mic because I think sound is just as important as hearing, you know, so Draynum came out with the beats. I want to create a um, microphone that embellishes all the aspects and can deal with all the wavelengths of tone and adjustment and all the things. So I'm working on that. I'm, I'm looking for a company um, that I can do that so I can add some of the, the stuff that's in my head um, to what they possibly have so we can create the super mic um, and see what we can come up with. So, all right. Okay, so Beats Motion 4J says, if the mix is final and sounds are not popping all over the place, but still needs finishing touches for that STU quality and saturation, distortion, and compression plug-in will work. This is what I, I'm, I'm just gonna sit back and drink my, my tea as y'all answer some of this stuff. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, and I'll definitely work on that. I'll definitely work on that uh, because I do think it's important. But, you know, um, you're going to ask me to bring out the lower octaves and then I got to go into the whole, you know, alien voice where, you know, I'm, I'm talking real deep and getting you in a meditative state to let you visualize your success and being there. <laughs> so, you know, we're doing You know what? There was an opportunity for Dre to actually do that. Oh my God, it's, it's I, so much I be wanting to say to you guys, but I just can't, I can't tell y'all some things that you're yeah, like with Dre because it's, it, he's a private person and I'm not trying to be blackballed in the industry, okay? But um, Dre was looking at that a while ago, looking at a lot of different stuff, but there is just so much, so many, elements is the the best way I can say it that determines what he actually do and how he move and just uh, I can't even say what I want to say uh, because you obviously know what I'm talking about but yeah you know so it, he's hindered in certain things uh, I don't even want to say that it's just yeah yeah red tape thank you tomorrow that's 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 the best way to say it I guess Right, so the brother says I'm a dynamic recorder. When I'm doing my raps, I be switching it up, flows, tones, etc. Most of the stuff I got sound great, but I'm always looking to push it beyond. Like that, bro. That's some Curtis Blow type shit. Yeah, that's that Curtis Blow talking. Gaming channel. I gotta check out your channel as well. And, and let me ask you this, guys. Some of you, I mean, let me ask you this. Honestly, why can't we make a doll? Why can't we create an open source project and we create our own doll? Put on the market, let everybody code and make changes and make suggestions, and we create our own doll. How hard is that? Who, who, who has that ability to help me put that in play? Think about that. That's something to really think about. And I'm not talking about, you know, a couple producers and we sat down together and we made rap bass, D-A-W. No, I'm talking about the producer community come up with a D-A-W or a recording software and studio that does everything that we wanted to do that the other softwares isn't doing. All right. Victor says, hey man, I have a question about the music industry. Like, it's a lot of hidden things going on behind the scenes in Hollywood and everything. Have you seen anything about that? Always, 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 always. There's always hidden stuff going on behind the scenes. For the most part, the reason why there's so much behind the scenes going on because people can't allow certain projects to escape and roll off the lips that will open the door for other things. And, th and that's why understanding how intellectual properties and trademarks and things like that work, uh, why, why it's so important, you know, to have a very tight team, a very tight team, you know, because loose lips do sink ships. I've seen that. Loose lips create animosity. Um, it's, it's, it is such a big part of the music industry. You gotta realize, when I first started doing this, no one else was doing this. I keep saying this to you. When I started this YouTube channel years ago, no one was doing what I was doing. You, you could look at people's YouTube channel and you could see 
who was doing what. No one was sharing what I was sharing. It was taboo for me to be sharing some of the stuff that I was sharing because I was saying to you what exactly happened. I was telling you to be independent. So before the Chance the Rappers and Taylor Swift and all these people became independent um, musicians and was controlling and, and now all these people are now indies and doing everything, I was the one telling people, you do that. Stop signing the damn record deal. Stop signing because you're just looking for a bank. I was the one doing it. And so when I was sharing that, it was, it was a, it was a, I used to hear in the studio, right, a lot of times from different writers that was in with us and artists be like, man, you gotta be careful, man. Mother boy gonna mess you up, you mess with their money, man. You got people thinking outside the box, man. We was always be in the studio dropping jewels on people, like to sit down and talk to him. And I would be sitting down talking to him and asking him certain questions and talking because I was taking the fact that he was making music and I'm like, well, M gotta know about this. And so I was dropping some universal galactic type alien UFO conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. And M be looking at you because he's real cool. The way you see M is how M really is. He's like, for real? Yo, that's, that's deep. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so it used to be crazy. We used to say a lot of stuff, man. Um, and uh, we learned a lot, but uh, yeah, it's, and I, and I got off subject a little bit, but I was still on. Yeah, it's uh, so much that go on within Hollywood and and in the music industry as a whole, and it's a lot of hush hush and a lot of different things. And and I'll tell you, cause just just as sure as like I'm seeing you guys, I you know a lot of you guys have your YouTube names and stuff like that. I can drop some st stuff here and, and reveal certain things. I don't know who you are. You could be a corporate CEO. I've, I've been de I've definitely had that a couple of times. People that's come into the chat and and spoken with you guys just to say what's up. They be the head of a. Uh, a record label or a distribution unit or a platform somewhere or they have some kind of technology right and they they're watching you guys interact with me and they're seeing all this so then they email me later on and be like hey i watched your video and you said this 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 and so you have to be very careful what you say when it comes to ideas and things that uh you may share uh because you never know who's watching and i don't know who's watching and, and that's real you know um because I tag everything, the peacemakers, and we are relevant. My brother's still relevant, um, you know. So a lot of industry people are still searching us, or they find out about us and they search us. And so the YouTube channel pops up, and then when I'm going live, they're watching. And so I don't want to say the wrong things and then get in trouble. Now, if we were just sitting all together and I knew who you guys was, and we were sitting in a conference, right, and y'all ask certain questions, as long as you weren't recording, I can ask, I can answer some of them. And, give you guys some insight to some stuff that I know and experience and shit like that. Rare Gullah says, what's good? He just showing some love. Your page is 100. So much good info on there. Um, if you have any updated info on streaming services and money payouts, okay. I should go to the exact link. I remember. Origin says, I like how you're sharing information because when you share the information, it helps the industry move forward for the people. And that's the whole, that's hopefully my whole purpose to, to help you guys move forward. Like my, my real wish is that you guys, and, and, and I know you can do it. I know you can do it because I have examples of this. Uh, but my hope be that you guys really are able to take something that I say and it, it be that pivotal thing that just takes you to the next level. And I know that has happened and I know it will happen because again, um, there's testimony by several producers. Some of you guys don't want me to say your name, but there are several testimonies with producers who are now, like I said, a part of the Grammys and they've been Grammy nominated. Um, they, they've been attached to platinum material and they, they credit me for that. And that's such a blessing. There's artists out there, especially a lot of YouTubers, like look up Sydney Renee. When we uh, met Sydney Renee in California, she was a young girl. It was one of the reasons why we really couldn't work with her because she was so young. But she was by our side. We, we taught her what we could within the realm of being big brothers. <clears throat> and when you look up Sydney Renee now, she has her own YouTube channel. I think she has a million something followers. Hellified singer, vocalist, all these things. She's like a little sister. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen her in years, but those are other examples. And there's countless examples of that type situation with artists and producers and songwriters and things like that. You know, even when it came to Anderson Pop, you know what I mean? Uh, us working and, and not really knowing who this brother is and now him being someone that Dre signed and he's he's blowing up so you know I my whole whole point be hoping that you guys really can utilize this um, this this information I'm giving you guys and seeing that we're tangible we're tangible you know what I mean like I I have been right beside Dre 
during TMZ. Look it up years ago. Can't make it up. We got caught outside. Me and Dre and the team is getting ready to go back to Malibu. And, you know, I'm, I'm walk. I'm outside and me and him getting ready to get in the Bentley and I'm on TMZ. You know, we are those guys, but we're, we're still this. This is this is who we are. You know what I mean? No matter what, we are these people. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, we're just like you. We are all comprised of the same elements within this universe. We're all breathing the same air. Our feet are all touching the same planet, you know, so we're connected as brothers. And if you truly believe uh, in a creator or higher being, right, then we know that we're all children, which makes us siblings. So my responsibility as your big brother or your little brother is to share with you how you can make it and be successful in life as well. Because success is lonely. I want you to understand that as well. Success creates loneliness. Success creates um, a disheartening situation. Success creates separation. You know what I'm saying? It's one of the things that me and my brother has always been good at. I could be working over here doing my thing and he's working over here doing his thing, but it's all for the same thing. And people don't understand how we do that. But uh, as your older brother, my job is to teach you what I know, right? Teach you what I know, you know, no bullshit, right? I gotta teach you everything I know. And so with that, it's still on you to make the proper investments in your career, right? So I can only lead you so far, I can only lead you so far, but you have to take certain steps as well because that's the same thing that happened to us. You get what I'm saying? So no matter what happened within our career, the people that I feel like possibly blocked or took advantage of us, what I do know happened is that experience is what allowed us to get to the point to where we are now. You see what I'm saying? It's why we are where we are right now. Comprehending that good, bad, or indifferent, as long as we knew here that we was going to make it, we was going to make it, and we did. Origin says, I feel lonely now because my friends aren't shooting for anything. They are just lazy and or nine to five. All right. So I want you to hold these thoughts, right? Let me, let me say this to you, right? Because I, I want you to really hone in on that friends aspect of it. You are your circle. And I want to explain this to you when I say that. If your circle is a bunch of weed heads or all your circle do is talk about weed, football, uh, sport cars, and you are a producer trying to build a career or you are a musician or a record exec, the odds are that's what you will become. You'll be drawn into that. If your if your friends or circles are people who rob, steal, smoke weed, that's all they do. The odds are that most of all of you will go to jail for that particular situation. So it says that if you keep a circle of community, if people making moves and y'all are teaming up, collaborating, figuring out how we can progressively move together, right? Then that's what you will get. We happened to team up with producers who was making moves and that's who our inner circle became, right? So we teamed up with the Justice Leagues and 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 all the other, you know, the hot boxes, Andre Brissett and, and the Scott Storches and these people, once we got to a certain place, that's our circle, right? That's our circle because we know as long as we're within our circle, we'll always be successful. You get me? So my aspect of it as a teacher, because that's what I am, I like to teach, I like to share what I know, my uh, circle is you guys because if you don't ask me questions or if you don't ask questions that make me think outside the box then I don't have anything to ha uh, answer that's what these live sessions are about the live sessions are about you guys asking questions and me saying always honestly oh I never heard of that before let me look it up or you teaching me something or I see something that goes out or a certain terminology that I've never saw before then I go back to that and then I answer it so you know you are let's see Yes, that's exactly what it is. Each one teach one. I've always, anyone who's followed me all these years know that it's always been an each one teach one experience. Okay, so I don't understand your questions, b Row. What's your opinion on artists having an ingenuine brand representing themselves as opposed to showing their true sides as an artist um be more specific to that in genuine brand i really want to know i really i think i really want to answer that question because of how you phrase it because it sounds like what do i think about artists that are phony i'm assuming i don't understand what, what you mean by that in genuine that was a bro okay Ripped off, each one teach one, positive community, that's a fact. Yep, yep, 
Yep, I believe, okay. I'm trying to read some of you guys' stuff and I apologize if I'm taking too long. And I'm trying to get to as many questions as possible. Again, this is why we need Super Chat. I just hope you guys take advantage of the Super Chat once we have it. Uh, yes, so let me say this. Michael Bailey says, I believe that there's always been that there's always been room at the table for all if we give the information that is needed to not survive but live well. Fact. That's what happens to a lot of circles. And so let me say this to you, which is very important. We can have a circle of community of brothers and sisters and we work together and we all achieve and we support each other to make this thing successful. What happens is if we don't come to an understanding, which is we're working together as a whole, I'm going to do me, you're going to do you, but we're going to work together to get this accomplished. That will lead to a road of disenfranchisement, uh, meaning that there's at some point in time, someone's going to be jealous. Someone's going to be want to be where the other person is or think that person is. Someone's going to feel like you're not actually utilizing your full potential or your 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 links to the best of their ability. It's always going to be somebody who don't agree with you that's going to try to shortstop you. I had this conversation with... Uh, uh, David Ma uh, Maxwell. Matter of fact, check out the last podcast I did on Anchor, guys, or iTunes if you didn't check it out. For So if you guys who don't know, check me out on my podcast. It's called Music Millionaires Podcast. And me and David had that conversation. It was a very deep conversation. Uh, we talked for quite some time and uh, it was a great podcast because we dropped and went all over the place. But check that out and you'll see what I'm talking about. So as Asvit Ramani asked, what were the best marketing venues that work for you? We are. We were the best marketing avenues that work for us. It's a part of the webinar tomorrow. I don't want to give too much up, but I'm going to tell you what worked for us. I'm not holding this. I'm not holding back, guys. I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you what worked for us and what 10 things we did that worked for us because you're going to be surprised when I say we were the best marketing avenue for us. We were, which means this. You have to be thinking. You have to be thinking. And I'm going to give you the jewels to why I say that. You have to be thinking. I, that's why I was telling you guys, when y'all come to be about my beats aren't selling and I'm not getting the traction that I need because you're not thinking. You're doing what everyone else is doing. Why are certain artists able to stand out quicker than everyone else? Why did the Takashi 6 9s and the Little Pumps and, and, and all these boys all come up around the same time? They jumped on something very fast that no one else was doing and so they all became the pioneers of it and then no one else that came in after them could do it why is all these little boys or these young men all had success why do all these producers all had general success during the same time it's a season you understand the same thing happened with us there was a season when when one of us got it we all got it let's all do it then it became oh, we can't do that no more because now they don't shut the doors right gatekeepers so then there's another season that comes in when people are thinking out the box and everyone says, oh shit, I see what he did. And then everybody's jumping on it and you have that group of people who made it successfully. So your Takashi 6 ix your Trippy Reds, your Lil Pumps, your Triple X Tensions, uh, uh, Lil Yachty, all them boys are a part of a certain era and there's something that's in common if you paid attention. Hair dye, color, tats on the face, extreme makeovers. These little cute little innocent little boys and become these extreme made over men so think about what i'm saying to you okay all right so sam says i know someone who's organizing urban events at a known club he wants my beat to share with some artist he knows is it a good idea to drop it without knowing where it's going no if he wants you if he wants to represent ask him what his intentions are what is he gonna get out of it what is your what are your safety hey you know I, I mess with you this is all cool I do know the business is a little slimy you know I me mean? so where are my security you know where's my security at you know what what it is that you know you really want to come out is how you want to get paid because anyone who says they're gonna do something for you for free there's always something behind it you have to really question that um, but these days, guys, let me say something to you. If someone's asking for your music and how we operate and how we've always operated is, when someone's interested in our music, it wasn't, well, I'm interested in that song. When they was interested in that song, that song came along with five other songs and they were able to pick that song from the other five that we gave them. And so that's a, a bigger picture is what I'm saying. If you're gonna pitch me, 
pitch me under the right pretense. Pitch me while I'm there. Pitch me when I'm with the artist. That's the proper way to do it, guys. If you are you releasing your music uh, in a public venue like BeatStars or something like that, where you expect people to listen to your track and they're only able to get a snippet. See, BeatStars is the best example of how your music is protected while at the same time people are able to view you. If you're not doing it that way in the physical form, then you are not protecting yourself. The, matter of fact, one of you guys just emailed me uh, KE on the track, right? Uh, and, I, and I hate to even bring this shit up, you know what I mean? Because I don't know the brother. I haven't met him. I do know one thing. He's from Tampa, Florida, from where, where I'm from. So it's, it's, it's effed up to even talk about it. But uh, he's a prime example, you know what I mean? Where he was accused of stealing Rick Ross. Um, devil, uh, damn, I slipped my damn track. The music slipped my mind. The Devil track. Uh, and originally it was supposed to be Major Seven's beat, right? And so as I'm reading this, and, and then I, I see where... Supposedly, there's this ongoing scam on Instagram that uh, he's been doing supposedly to artists where he's selling them either the same beat as an exclusive track or he's been selling a two chain hook over and over again. And he got somebody for 30,000, somebody else for 5,000. And he's contacting guys like you, right? The up and coming producers and, or rappers. And he's saying, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, I like your music, and I, and I think it'll go dope with my stuff. Send me some money for my track, and then I'll include so-and-so in your music. See, that's the stuff y'all got to look out for. And it's sad because it makes the game bad for a lot of us. You know what I mean? As, as a Grammy Award-winning producer, as a person who knows what they're doing in the music industry, if I decided I wanted to send some beats for artists to sell uh, or buy, now I got to look at them looking at me like I'm this dude. Now, again, I don't know if this is what he's doing, you know what I'm saying, but I'm just showing you what has been shown online. Uh, so, you know. Q, the turnip says, I'm thinking, pro thinking producing for folks like Ariana, Rihanna, Madonna. I got big production visions. Yes. And you can do that. And I'm going to talk about how you can do that tomorrow uh, on the webinar. And yes, it is crazy. Oh, she on the 99 saying Jules that he's being dropped. Appreciate it, family. I, I try my best, man. I, I pr try my best. What are the POs doing? What are the PROs doing that I can't do for myself to collect my own royalties? Virtually what the performing rights organizations are doing, Jay uh, Gizmo, is one thing. They have already done all the work for you. And let me explain something to you. PROs, if you got the right PRO, they don't get paid for this. They're non-profit for a reason. Now, a company like CSAC, which is for profit, that's different, but they choose you. The ASCAPs and BMIs are not for profit organizations. So all they do is pay other salaries and they pay their, their expenses. But what they can do for you is they don't, you can't go throughout the United States and, and know every establishment that is playing your music. For example, when you go to little clubs or little bars or like little restaurants and you hear the music playing in the background, uh, of that restaurant. What you don't hear is if they're doing their thing the right way is advertisements. Reason why? Because a company like Outback, who is a large corporation, has contacted BMI or ASCAP for their catalog of music to license to play throughout all of their restaurants. So they're paying for that. What you can't do is go to one million possible, that's the key, possible restaurants, hotels, establishments, 10 million hotels, establishments, 20 million hotels, establishments, restaurants, elevators, and say, I need to get paid when you pay me or play my music. There is no way for you to enforce. There's no way for you to enforce them to pay you. You get what I'm saying? So this is what PROs can do for you that you cannot do for yourself. And again, I know that they might be licensing the music under a blanket license, which means for a flat fee. However, they are able to collect that money for you. And they, are, they tell the licensee, the person who licensed their, your music, you have to report. You have to report. These are part of the stipulations. How many times that music has been played? How many times? Matter of fact, most of the time they enforce, they make them report by making sure that they have proper software that's automatically reporting what spins, what plays are happening. So that way the right artists get their portion of that group or lump sum of money that they are um, that pool of money that they're distributing. The webinar is real simple. When I get off here, guys, go to the main channel, go to um, the 10 uh, secrets that I've kept uh, and the webinar is at the bottom. It's in the link. Uh, also, check out my uh, IG. You'll see it there. 
Uh, I tried to copy and paste. I thought I copied and pasted here. If someone has time, like DeMario or something, little brother, can you please paste it in here for me? Uh, check out the webinar. It'll be 12 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, I'm trying to get somebody in the office to work with me that day because I have everybody off normally so that they can control the um, slides and stuff like that. But it'll be tomorrow. And like I said, I'm dropping some jewels. And this is going to have to be the last question, guys, because get ready to close up. I got stuff to do. Got my children out here waiting uh, as they play video games and stuff. What's my opinion on got to get out the hood mentality? And this is not, but people taking advantage of others who aren't aware of such secrets in the music business. So I think you're asking me, what's my opinion on the got to get out the hood mentality? It's a great thought process. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get out of your situation. There is nothing wrong with wanting to better yourself. You have to have that. I don't care. What, listen, I don't give a damn if you're making six figures now. You could be making six figures now as an airline uh, pilot, um, uh, 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 um, whatever, a doctor. I don't know what you guys do personal in your personal life. But if you are stagnant, let me get this to you better. The only thing that is constant is change. Change is the most constant thing within the universe. The universe never stands still. No matter how slow we are moving on this planet, it is not. Plants do not stay the same. Trees do not stay the same. They die and reborn. And what I'm and the reason why I'm, I'm I'm bringing this up to you is because anything that does not change, anything that is accustomed to being where it is and don't have the mentality or mindset to want to get into a better situation, better situation is dead. Physically or mentally, it's dead. So change is the only thing that allows us to know something is living. Change is the only thing that allows us to be in tune with the universe. When we are no longer in tune with the universe, that's when bad things happen, okay? So getting out of the hood is a must. It's a mentality you must have. There's nothing wrong with having that mindset and mentality. You guys have to have it, but you have to have it under the, under the understanding and overstanding that what I do, no matter how great I am at doing it, has to be destroyed so it can be rebuilt even better. Even within our success, there had to be things that was destroyed in order for us to achieve greater things. And I hope that makes sense to you. So that mentality has to be your drive. When something bad happens, how the universe has it and how the creator has it is most of the time, something better happens. You just can't see it right then, but something better happens and lines up for you. No matter how bad you think that shit is, no matter how bad it was, something better happens out of it. Even something minute. It doesn't have to be something that happens and just continuously happen. That's not how the universe operates. But the mentality to say, I want to make myself better is a, it is a part of your genetic DNA connection to the universe that says we have to do this again. Don't get too comfortable. We got to do it again. Don't, don't blah, blah, blah. And let me explain something to you. When you see people who aren't that way, when you have people that cannot see or think outside the box, run. The most dangerous individual in the world is a person who is comfortable where they are in life. The most dangerous individual in the world that you need to stay around from is a person who cannot see past their situation. That means they're comfortable there. That means they're going to be stagnant. There is nothing like drinking stagnant water. It's the worst water you can drink because it's the water that will get you the sickest and kill you. Think about what I just said. So your circle needs to be filled with people who are constantly constantly thinking outside the box and wanting to change all right so that was a great question guys and i appreciate it i think it's the best way that we uh um should end this particular video guys i'll see you guys again hopefully i'll see you guys tomorrow um i won't be doing the sunday live program because i'll be doing a webinar tomorrow and hopefully a lot of you guys are on there like i said if you're not a music millionaire hopefully you become one by tomorrow but I hope I gave you guys a lot of jewels. And do me a favor, man. Please share these videos. Share. That's the thing. I, we need to put... Uh, you By sharing, you never know what producer you're going to bring on board that's going to help you succeed and get you where you are. We would not have gotten to where we were if it was not for the producers who were not selfish, who thought outside the box and saw our talent and wasn't threatened by our talent. So they shared us with other people. Guys, think about that. Always remember, music is life, and you create life because y'all are producers, you're superheroes. Remember that shit. There ain't no corny shit. Y'all are superheroes, man. All right? Music is life. We out.